is down in the cap off. Okay, but are we are we gonna wait for it to migrate up to the to the aquifer or are we gonna are our plans ought to vent at that depth? That's part of the order that went out last night that uh, Texas Brine has to develop a plan to mitigate the methane that's coming to the surface and how they approach that and where they put vent wells is part of what they have to put together. Uh, I guess my the conclusion I'm coming to is it's deeper than the aquifer. The we gas is coming from at least 5,000 feet okay. down. So that, that, that leads me to my question again. Are we going to wait? Or are y'all going to wait till it migrates to the aquifer? Or are y'all going to do y'all job and vent it? I'm out in Texas, Brian. Y'all in our community. As I mentioned, we're going to recomplete a well in the, that's currently One there. Well. It's a well that's currently there and get it going as soon as we can. Part of the order that we received about 5 p.m. last night um, that we're still trying to go through says we have to decide and define and design additional wells to vent this off. I've had 30 hours to look at it, and I, I can't do anything else in that time. When, when was this gas found at this depth? How long that well been in place? We put it in in late September. And when did you first encounter gas? When we put it in. So you've been knowing they've been having gas at that depth since late December, or so, what's it September. September. Uh, when we, when and we, we found just found out about that? When we found about it, uh, within about Sorry. two days, we communicated to the DNR. I have a question for you. When did y'all communicate with Chevron and ask if one of their people to come test was on your cases? I'm sorry, what? Did y'all contact Chevron to come check from guys coming up around your cases? Has Chevron contacted us. To go check y'all cases? Mm -hmm. uh, I do I have another question. Okay, cases, wait. When is the uh, seismic survey going to be stopped? To find the voids in the, under the earth. We are submitting the plan today. I haven't seen the plan. Uh, I've got people on engineering. Well, we've been talking it. about surveying or seismic surveying for, for months, and it's just starting to happen. That's what, that's what everybody's so frustrated about. Things are not happening. I'm just asking why. Somebody. Grow some cayus and tell us what's going on. I'll be good. It's fine. <laughs> Brandon? Uh, Brandon? No. Okay. Mike, can you hear Okay. Further? Yeah, I have a question. They said they ordered a uh, monitoring for the houses. Did it order monitoring for the road? Thank you. Pass on every day. No. DOT, thank you. I'm sorry. Would somebody come up and give them that answer? Okay, I think the question pertained to gas along the highway uh, as opposed to settlement that, that came out. Uh, as that is not part of the order uh, right now. Once methane gets in the atmosphere, it's very light and it tends to rise up very fast. Uh, the only way the highway would be at risk is is from a large volume of methane coming up at once. And all the data we've collected so far says that's an extremely remote. Uh, possibility, but part of the stability analysis that I talked about is specifically to answer that question. It, and that is, if you can you get enough gas in a large enough void where if it came to the surface, it would be a problem. I wish I had an answer for you. I don't. But we're working on it. That's one of Atasca's first things you're looking at using rocket cannon. Just to follow up on that, there are, are area ray monitors that we have out. We currently have seven of them out. Uh, 
closest one to the highway is at the intersection of Gumbo and Highway 70. Uh, we also have uh, uh, one uh, down Sportsman's Drive, the second house to the left. So there are air monitors, uh, monitors in the community that are uh, uh, looking for uh, the LEL, Lord Explosive Limit, and they, they are uh, pretty close to the highway. Thank you. Mike? Yeah, uh, Dr. Harris, you mentioned that you're on your illustration. What are you doing? On your illustration, you show the pressure gauges just going down into the, uh, about halfway down. Is there a reason they don't go over to, to the gas function? Uh, well, that's part of the order. Texas Brian's been ordered to put pressure monitors into the aquifer. Uh, we did the GEOPRO shallow because, in all honesty, we didn't know how we could install pressure monitors at depth into the aquifer and do it safely. Not just for our work crews, but the people that are out there now. We think now that we've got the, we understand the pressure regime, we can design a safe drilling method to install pressure monitors into the top of the aquifer as well as in the shallow part. And that's, that's part of the compliance order. Do you mean the grow rights about putting uh, the gauges where we can see them so that if we are basically ordered to go back home, uh, we'll be able to, to monitor these and go back and forth to work and see if the pressure level is rising from, not necessarily from Texas Brian, but from Dow, from Chevron, <coughs> any of those have uh, you mentioned that, or maybe Stephen mentioned that he needed a property, uh, the owners of the property, uh, consignment to have that done. Is it, it, instead of putting it on people's property, wouldn't it be better just put it on highway right away and get these done about every quarter of a mile or so, where people can, can next time there's a problem crop up, we can, we can nip, nip it in the blood before it gets, you know, all the way down the line like this right here. Yeah, and, and they do a, there has to be a plan developed to monitor them besides you walk, riding up and down. They have to have, we, we need to have the operators to be able to monitor to keep up for all of us. Well, right now, the one place the monitor is, is on the site itself and you're not allowed on there. Right. We have to trust Texas Brian and Dow to monitor that for us. And so far, it's not working. We need this to be public so that if we're going to come back home, we want to see those monitors. We want to say it's safe. And also, it can't be clogged up. Somebody has to also be in charge to clean those things out. From start to finish. I think there's not one of us that disagree with that at all. Hello. I'm Becky Gilbo. And, and I'm sorry, and I'm going to do a follow up to that. I'm Becky Gilbo, and I've been living in Valley Barn almost 20, 20 something years, and I've been having my place for 25. And I love it more than anybody in this world. And uh, I tell you what, all the things that's going on now, and they keep on putting things off, keep on putting the things off, that we're going to do this test, going to do that test. It keeps on coming, that it haven't come in yet, it have not come in yet. Well, they lie. They lie from day one. And they don't want to tell us the truth, because they know good and well that that place is not good to live in no more. And I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm leaving. I hate to, but I'm leaving because I'll tell you what, we, we did some sweating back there. Our homes means the world to us, and I don't see how come they just don't want to tell us the truth. Because like Miss Jackie was saying, she's 80, okay, she wants to go back home, but in my heart, I don't think I, anybody will be able to because they can't tell us how long it's going to take. What, months, years, what? I mean, people can't stay at homes with somebody who uh, they stay with, their friends, bring them home. they got to keep on going with their lives. They can't keep put it on hold. I mean, we got to keep on living. And Texas Brown is not doing it. Just tell us the doggone truth. That's all. Thank you. Any 
any more questions? Uh, okay. Dennis, you hired anybody? Yes, sir. Okay. This is not necessarily a question, but I think that DHH needs to have a toxicology expert or toxicologist in their realm when we have our next meeting so that we can get some of these health questions answered by an expert in that field. Dion, is, they're shaking their head yes, so... Um. And maybe, maybe it'll get ordered by Texas Fry and ordered by Texas Fry and get that order about it. Well, that's, uh, that would be, I'm not sure. Okay. It's still ordering stuff. I want to have some. Okay. Dennis, I'm sorry about that. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, this question is for Dr. Heacock or anybody with the science group. But you said something earlier that caught my attention, and I wish you would expand on it a little bit. You were talking about the gas bubbling in the body, and you mentioned how most of the gas bubbling, you kind of felt like you could explain it because it coincided with the, uh, the depth of gas in the uh, layers of earth below us. But on the northeast end of Grand Bayou, you indicated you didn't quite understand that gas bubbling. Can you expand on that a little bit and tell us, if, if you can't explain it, what would be the theories or the possible theories to explain the bubbling there? Because I, I'm questioning that and I'm wondering is that gas coming from somewhere else? Is that a possibility? Uh, it's, it's possible, but the isotopic analysis we've done on those in Grand Bayou indicating, indicates it's coming from the same source as the methane we're seeing in the other bubble sites. What I can't explain is from a gas flow geology standpoint, is why the gas is coming out in that area of Grand Bayou. Obviously, there's something I don't understand to explain. Uh, that's as far as I can take it right now. We've talked about various options, none of which fit all the data. Right now, all I can tell you, we're working on it. Uh, I can't explain it. To simplify, you're saying that gas, you think, is basically the same but you don't understand why it's coming out there. Correct. Okay. Yeah, the gas, the gas is the same as what we call formation gas. Okay. Uh, we've got the isotopic signature of the gas stored in the other caverns, and they're very distinct. And the gas in Grand Bayou is coming from the same source as the Bayou corn and coming from the sinkhole. Could it be following the path of least resistance? Most certainly. I just wanted to know, is there a possibility of a major explosion in our subdivisions? Yes. The answer is yes. I wouldn't be telling you to get your houses checked if I thought there wasn't. What, what's the percentage? I don't have a percent. Uh, I, I don't take the recommendation lightly. You need to get your houses checked, and the reason is what you just done. How often do we have them checked? We don't have the monitors they have permanent. Well, hopefully the monitors will be there. If you're living in your houses now and they're slab on grade, not the ones on pillars, but those slab on grade houses, uh, as far as I know, you could ask DQ to check your house on a routine schedule until you get the monitors put in. Routine, weekly, daily? Uh, given the small, we've calculated the flow rate of gas, and probably once or twice a week, if, if I was living, I wouldn't be living in the house, but let's say I was, I would probably want them checked at least weekly. And, then, and the next step is to make sure that you all get something permanently put as soon as possible. Yes, Mr. Dean. Uh, I'm Bob King. I live down the street from Dennis, and my house is on a slab on grid. So what I want to know is roughly how long can I expect 